Our next project is to work on building some new wheel wells for this camper. When I removed the body up off the frame, there were plastic wheel wells previously installed. They already were not in the best shape. They had some cracks, they were falling out, but I absolutely had to destroy them to get it out easily. So what I decided at that point that I was gonna do is build metal ones. Um, I just had been putting it off, putting it off, but I finally went and got a sheet of 16 gauge steel, cold rolled steel, which is just what was available. Um, and I am in the process of forming kind of a box that's gonna sit where the old ones were. I've made one just for a little practice, uh, not practice, I've made the one side, we're gonna do the other side now. So let me show you what I've got. All right, here's what we've got. Now this is uh, sitting upside down right now. So this is the front, this is the back. Um, it will be 180 degrees around. The curve of the wheel well will get cut into this. And then in the center area, over here, there's gonna be um, a small section that will come up, well, for down from the top, um, that will be reinforced in the back. And then we'll probably come back into these corners as well and either add a curved piece or just a flat piece on an angle, um, just to reinforce this whole thing. And then this will all get screwed into the frame and into the body to make it super strong. It should be way stronger than what was there. Um, it's not the most impressively strong thing now, but it is pretty rigid, so. Now the goal is to make another one. Uh, the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna cut two rips up the length of this. We're gonna create one that's the top. So these two ends and the top are all one piece that are bent. Um, and then um, I just realized I built this wrong. As I was just looking at that, I realized that I was saying the top is bent. This is actually the top. It's bent around to the sides, which means this piece should actually be tacked on here. So I did that wrong. Good thing I just tacked it. We'll cut this off and we'll, we'll move it on up. So I'll do that right on the next one. But like I said, one piece will get bent for the top. We'll cut one piece for the back and then we'll tack it all together. Okay, so I've got one fender kind of welded up here. I wanted to play around with this a little bit before I took you guys along for the ride. Um, what I did was I put some angle pieces in here. I ended up using a piece of cardboard to get this pattern off of the uh, existing opening in the camper because this does not fit without taking the wheels off. And I don't want to do that twice. So I did that on both sides. And then this fun little piece here, that this weird bump out is, uh, so that the fender, there's a, a rivet in the middle of the fender and this will catch that. So it's like way over the top, but this will add a lot of strength. So um, what we're gonna do now is I'll take you guys along for the steps here. I forgot my tripod today, so it's just gonna be a little bit of walking around and I'll just check in with you as I go. Um, so I've made this piece. This is gonna be that piece down there, but I've got some bends I have to put in this, which is a little awkward of how close together they are. So let me bend this up and I'll show you what we got next. This is what it looks like bent up. I've got kind of two different radius bends here because of the way I had to bend this one, I was able to use a sheet metal bending uh, break. And the other one I had to kind of cheat and use one that goes on a, um, a little press over there. So that's why I've got the two different radiuses, but it'll work fine. Um, this is going to just get tacked like that on here. And so let me see if I can prop my phone up and uh, get this tacked. Okay, I'm gonna show you the process on cutting some of this. I don't think I've shown this yet. This is a uh, 48 inch metal shear um, that we are cutting at the upper end of its abilities here. Um, we've got our marker line down here. It's a little hard to see if it's lined up, but I just have to take my word for it. 
This is a really good way to cut a finger off if you're not careful. So I'm gonna get that set and then I'm gonna step on this to hold it and get my hands out of the way. I usually have to jump on this a little bit. Like I said, cutting on the upper end of its ability, but we got a nice clean edge from that. So now what we're gonna do is bend this fit around here. We're a teeny bit short, which we knew, but we'll, we'll kind of pull this down a little bit, split the difference. But I had a piece that was an eighth of an inch too short to do this. I didn't want to waste it. So I'm gonna mark our bends on here and then I'll show you how we bend it. For our bending process, we're using this big break here. And uh, I'm gonna hold my phone while I do this, so forgive me. But um, what we're gonna do is line up these fingers here with our line and uh, we're just going to kind of eyeball 45 degrees, which I realize sounds really imprecise, but uh, it's a little hard to accurately measure on this thing because the surface that you're bending against on the backside is not perfectly flat with where you might think it is. So um, I've been using this enough where I just kind of get it close. And we go ahead and we clamp it down. And then we're just going to pick this up. And we're going to go not quite to where I think it needs to go because it's always a little less than I think. I'll loosen this up. This is a little hard to do while holding the phone. Okay, so there's my best approximation of 45. I may have gone too far. Okay, so I went too far. Like I said, it's always more than I think. So now what we'll do, we'll clamp back in and we'll just kind of bend it back by hand. We'll get this first side right, I'll bend the other side, and then I'll show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like with our two bends. And uh, I trimmed off a little extra. And it's a pretty good fit, not perfect, but we can flex it as we go. We'll get this top tacked, and then we're gonna get the bottom swung in or out until it's square with this top and then we can cut our pieces to fill in here. All right, this is tacked in now, and so we've got a pretty square opening here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut pieces for the two sides here. Um, and then we'll tack them in and we're gonna notch them after they're tacked. Um, so I'll show you guys that, but let me go chop some pieces for this and we'll get them in. All right, we're tacked. Got some nice big gaps up there, but that's okay. We'll fill them in. This is like so not structural and such overkill um, that I know my fitment sucks and that's okay because no one's gonna see it. It's up in the wheel well. I will weld them all up just like I did with that one. Uh, they were actually worse on that one. So that looks pretty good. Um, next step is gonna be to do the uh, corners in here and here, just like that. So I'm gonna cut up two pieces for that and we'll get them tacked in. Okay, this thing is welded up and I came back and I ground down these corners. Um, welds went decent on this one. Uh, had some good ones, had some not so good ones. So, uh, you know, I'll take it, it is what it is. Um, the last, well not the last step, the second to last step is gonna be to trim these, which is real awkward to do with the grinder. Um, so I'm not gonna film that either, but I'm gonna trim them off. We gotta clean this thing up one more time. Um, and then I'm also gonna drill some holes along the bottom edge of this before I paint. Um, so hoping to be able to get this painted pretty soon here. All right, I had to call it a day the other day, but I'm back at the shop. I'm gonna try to finish these up today and maybe get them primed and painted. Um, where we're at now is I've got all these edges ground. Everything turned out really nice. I'm not seeing any, any gaps or cracks or anything, but I did just go around and I found a couple little pinholes in the welds. So I'm gonna clean them up um, I also went through the other day and I cut these angled pieces and so there's a bunch of sharp edges. So I've just got a bunch of grinding, cleanup work um, before we're ready to actually get this prepped for paint.
right, so I went and drilled these holes. Uh, you saw me using a step bit there after I drilled the hole. That's to create that little chamfer, that little uh, kind of ramp on the edge there. It takes off all the extra metal, uh, keeps it nice and smooth so when we paint, there aren't any sharp pieces. So um, this thing's ready to go. Um, so I'm gonna put this outside, let it warm up in the sun a little. It's a little cooler today, and then I'm gonna do the same process to this other one to prep it. All right, we're all ready to prime and paint these. I've got holes drilled for mounting. Everything is nice and clean and has been ground to get any of the, uh, the scale off. We've also got a couple bonus pieces that I did not record, but these are for um, installing the tanks. I realized if I made them quick today, um, I'd be able to prime them and paint them at the same time. So I'll show you guys these in a later video, uh, but these are gonna be to hold the tanks underneath the camper. So uh, I'm gonna give everything one last wipe here and then we'll mix some paint and start spraying. Okay, I've got two coats of primer, two coats of paint on everything. Turned out really nice. Uh, this is the same paint that I use for the, the frame. Um, this is just a, a 2K uh, single stage black paint and it's a satin finish. Um, except for my iffy welds in some spots, I'm gonna say this turned out about as good as I could hope. So we're gonna let this dry and uh, I've got a little traveling to do but uh, once I get back from my trip, we'll get these things installed. All right, I'm back from my traveling and it's time to get these wheel wells in. Uh, I made a pretty big risk by not test fitting these before I painted them uh, because I have to pull the wheels off, I think, to get these in. I tried to fit them from the top, they wouldn't go. Uh, I was short on time. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake by doing that, uh, but I'm just assuming these are gonna get at least scratched and there's gonna be some touch ups and that's fine process here is going to be we're going to hitch this thing up to the truck just so it can't move and then we're going to jack up one side at a time take the wheels off and try to fit these things up in here and get them attached so here goes nothing All right, little update here. That was uh, a heck of a fight, and I didn't think it was gonna work for a minute there. You can see we really tore up the paint. Uh, it was probably about a 16th too long, but um, thanks to our friend the Bottle Jack here, we were able to persuade this thing up in there. Um, there's still a lot of screws I haven't put in yet, and it's pretty, pretty flexed uh, out in spots because of the way it was forced. Um, you can see back there, I had to grind the wells out of the corners. The other thing I didn't account for in fitting it was that this plate stuck out. Uh, I thought I was gonna be able to install these from the top, had to go from the bottom. And so that really complicated it. Thankfully there was enough flex on this aluminum here to get it up in there and then push it back. Um, but it is not perfect. You can see it sticks out beyond this. So actually as I'm looking at this, I think I'm gonna take this screw out and see if I can push this back in the corner. But right now it's just some fitting and a bunch of screws. 
Uh, but that's one out of two installed. Successful install on both sides here. Uh, this other side went even easier. A little bit of scratch paint, but uh, wheels are back on and everything's looking good. Here's our inside, nice clean metal fenders, just like you'd see in like an enclosed trailer. We'll come in here later and we'll seal all these edges on the inside and outside, get all this weather tight. But really happy with this. Everything just feels really solid now that it's attached. And we're ready to move on to the next step. Now that the wheel wells are in, we can finally get the fenders on, which is gonna be the next video. Had them on once, had to take them off, so they'll go back on again. And then uh, we've just got a bunch of other little stuff. We're gonna start working on the plumbing. We've got some patch panels. We can start putting some of the lights on the outside. Uh, we're getting to the fun part, finally, after years of this. So follow along. Really appreciate subscribing to my channel, Baker Makes It. And these videos are just gonna keep on coming. Thanks, guys.